Hi folks! Another week, an ep the another episode of You Don't Know Jack. This time we're playing for a false shirt front. Go figure. Let's get started. Happy Father's Day. I called my dad today and he greeted me the same way he does every time I call. Donnie who? What a kidder. He's my progenital, and I'm not ashamed to say that I love him like a father. But I regress. How many players? One little player. Oh well, why don't you enter your name? Why don't you enter your name? Why don't you? You take care of that. Really? You have no name? How on no, Portugal? I don't. Let's see. Oh, let's call you Santa. Santa, Bert, that's a new one. Great, now I get to tell you the institutional. Many questions Too bad I wasn't doing this on Christmas. Upon you. you need to wingle out the correct choice and impress the boutonniere next to it. There is a clock counting down your time, so if you buzz in forthwith, the more Sonorians you'll win. Or revanquish. We're almost at go. Ten seconds. Happy trials. Check camera three, please. Six. Five. I think you have the wrong cameras for this. No, never mind. That you are writing them. I am Cookie Masterson. Unless Sergio sent you, then it's none of your damn business who I am. <laughs> A single player game, I see. Yeah, thanks for making us go through all the effort. You're and very the welcome. The long answer of the game is sponsored by Dick's Dickies. Don't trust your dicky to just anybody. Trust Dick with your dicky. If you happen to find our sponsor's wrong answer of the game, you'll be rewarded with big prizes and cash. <laughs> Which one of bet there really is and a Dick's off. Dicky out there? To get started, rockin' some Crocs. Ew. Suppose the makers of Crocs created Croc Crocs, a line of comfortable shoes for actual crocodiles. Would the shoes need room for toes? Yes, up to five toes per Croc Croc. Yes, up to three toes per Croc Croc. Yes, just one toe per Croc Croc, or no toe room needed. I have no idea. I don't know what Croc feet look like. I'm gonna guess they have three toes. That's a Croc. No. No, honestly. Crocodiles have five toes in their front legs and four toes in their back legs. Really? So the croc crocs would need five toes. I just think it's weird when baby crocodiles wear crocs. What kind of crocodile parent does that? <laughs> this one's called Dirty Literature. Considering the messy environment the characters in the Grapes of Wrath had to deal with, what cleaning product should they have purchased? Clorox degreaser, CLR rust remover, OxyClean stain remover, or a Swiffer duster? A whole dust bowl thing. The Grapes of Wrath was set in the dust bowl of the 1930s. Then again, when you're living in a depression, the first thing that should probably get left off the budget is a Swiffer. Yeah. Take a good look at you ganja get killed. If he lives to be 80, what are the odds that Jamaican sprinter Usain Lightning Bolt will get hit by a lightning bolt? One in 3,000, one in 420,000, one in one million, or one in seven billion? Oh, what was that? 420,000, I think? Rastafarong, man. No. Next time, try this. If you or Usain Bolt were to live to be 80 years old, the odds of getting hit by lightning over your lifetime would be 1 in 3,000. But don't worry, at 80, your odds of hitting a lightning bolt with your Oldsmobile are actually much higher. I got nothing. Out, that state has huge air balls. If college basketball's Final Four were composed solely of representatives of the Final Four states admitted to the Union, which team could feasibly appear in the championship? Oklahoma Sooners, Kentucky Wildcats, Arizona Wildcats, or Delaware Fighting Blue Hens? Oh, Lord. Now, we're 46th. Arizona must have been later. Arizona was the 48th state to enter the Union. So along with New Mexico, Alaska, and Hawaii, they'd be in the Final Four. And if they got eliminated in order from 47th state to 50th state, that would mean the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors would win the National Basketball Championship. Where's the bomb girl? Ooh, yeah. 
Next, the Fartful Dodger, and it's a diss or dat. Cue the awesome music. I'm going to read off seven things, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's a character in a Charles Dickens story or a slang term for a fart. If it's Dickens, press the number one. If it's a fart, press two. Each one right is worth 300. Each one wrong costs you 300. Watch your time, answer quickly, and it'll be a gas. Okay, we're off. Wopsy. Smoofer. Fumble. Fuzz Fuzz. Flabbergaster. Man. Slapper. Congrats, you met my not so great expectations. Who knew that when Charles Dickens. Oops, I think I just made a tiny Tim. That brings a close to round one. And you should be very proud of that score, because I'm not. Keep in mind, all the prizes are doubled in round two. Not a good game and so far. Hint, hint, I better turn this one around, the game huh? game is still out there waiting for you. Let's keep going. Bucker up for... Call me Cookie. Let's say for Kesha's European tour, she converts her name to Kairoha. Which country would not accept her? Ireland, Finland, Portugal, or Sweden? That's a good question, actually. I'm gonna guess Sweden doesn't take the money yet. If Kesha converted her dollar sign to euros, she wouldn't be accepted in Sweden where they use a monetary unit called the Krona. You can use Krona to buy uh, meatballs and um, furniture at Ikea. Better purchase than Kesha. Here's what say. I like to call X-Men. Suppose you were married to Mystique from the X-Men comics. If you got fed up with her crap and wanted to leave her, what true statement could she make to try to get you back? I can be whoever you want me to be. I would bend steel for you. If you leave, I'll strike you with lightning. Or, you know, I could kill you with my mind. On a side note, X-Men First Class was actually a really good movie. Mystique has the unique ability to morph into the shape of anyone she's seen. Which would be all fine and good if she'd do something other than watch Richard Simmons' videos. Lord and chickens picking out a mate. It's a scary thought. Mary eight. Up next, read the package carefully. So you know products list their ingredients on their packages in order of most prominent ingredient to least prominent, right? It's the perfect choice into order Oh boy. And yeah, 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 I'm adding a thousand bucks for this one. Anyway, arrange these three main ingredients of Oscar Mayer light bologna as they appear on the package. Mechanically separated chicken, water, pork. Mechanically separated chicken, pork, water. Pork, mechanically separated chicken, water. Pork, water, mechanically separated chicken. Or mechanically separated chicken, water, pork. Hmm. I have no idea. Time's running I out. I think water's the least important. Your answer has a first name. No. It's W-R-O-N-G. Ah. Where's that confounded right answer? There is more chicken and water than pork in Oscar Mayer light bologna. So in a weird way, Oscar Mayer bologna is a lot like us. It's made up of mostly water and chicken. Here's a good one. Books have them big words in them. Which best-selling children's book could be considered an epistolary book? Fun with Dick and Jane, Goodnight Moon, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, or Where the Wild Things Are? Oh, I have no idea. Not a clue. Let's go with the first one. Now pay attention. An epistolary novel relies on a series whoa, whoa, of wait, correspondence, wait. usually oh, God, Dick letters, Stickies. or sometimes diary entries to tell the ha! story. So if Random House were to somehow get their hands on my life's correspondence with Coolio, it would also be classified as an epistolary <laughs> novel. Dick and Jane doesn't fit. 
But you know what always fits? A brand new Dickie compliment of Dick's Dickies. The comfort of an ascot meets the character of a turtleneck sweater. Who can resist? Dick's Dickies. Today's wrong answer of the game brings you an extra $8,000. Surprise. Wow. Hold me, never let me go. That was sheer luck. I'll take it, though. Try this I'll take luck. Size. It tastes like burning. I enjoy so Taco Bell, reference. especially their explosively hot volcano menu at 3.30 in the morning. I'm kind of a health nut. When I'm eating a volcano taco from Taco Bell, what would be an appropriate name for the sauce that erupts out of the taco and onto my lap? Tephra sauce, magma sauce, lava sauce, or plutonic sauce? Uh, out of the taco, I'm the lava. Well, lava's what comes out, so... Now magma's the spurting part, isn't it? I guess you like your taco no, stuff it must with be lava. failure. Let me show you something. Molten rock located within a volcano is magma, but as soon as it emerges out of the volcano, it is known as lava. And at about 5.30 in the morning, I usually get to experience an eruption all over again. Yep. Welcome to the attack. When you see two clues that match, Press 1, 4,000 if you're right, but say goodbye to 4,000 if you're wrong. And one more thing. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. It's good to be the king. I'm the king of trivia. You hear me, Alex Trebek? <clears throat> good luck. Okay, king of pop. No. Come on. There you go. I won't know all these, but Kevin... Who is Kevin James? King of Queens, right? Yeah, thought so. Jesus Christ. King of Kings, I believe they call him. Yes. Wiser King of Beers. Hank Hill, King of The Hill. Not Kong. No. 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 Yes. Lion King of the Jungle. They may call him King of Beasts, though. Yeah, King of Beasts, okay. King of all media. There is it. That was sneaky. That's all she wrote! With a perfect jack attack and a pretty decent score going into it, I decree you King of Jack! Long live the king! Long live the king! Alright, alright, enough of that. Before your head gets too big for your crown, don't forget. You don't That's a wrap. Donnie, what's happening? Just give me the single if you want to proceed with continuation. Well, a film came out I've had better episodes. Suspense forever. Mom, that hurt. As it dies. Sheesh. A wary sight. A wary eyes. Oh well, it's Which over. Not weaken me. I guess a few good Show episodes in a row. That film was witchy and I guess I was overdue for a bad one there, folks. It was kind of a mess. Anyway, I'll be back next week for, for more You Don't Know Jack. Summer, the wait is over. See you presents. then, and as always, I leave you with the commercials. The silence of these woods is Bye, folks. Salazar, three elves! Quickly, warlock, an incantation. This July, prepare yourselves for Witch's Wheel 2. To the sequel. To the sequel. This Monday, catch the season six premiere of Farting with the Stars. And this season, we've got our most star-studded cast ever. C, Helen Hunt, Jim Caviezel, Leonard Nimoy, the guy from that one medical show, and the girl from that movie with the guy from Scrubs. It's gonna be big, it's gonna be hot, and it's not gonna smell good. It's Farting with the Stars, where the only thing louder will be the roar of the crowd. Monday at, whoop, excuse me, Monday at seven, be there. Celebrity Farts Impersonated.
Each year, tens of dozens of puppeteers suffer serious hand injuries because they didn't use the proper lubrication before stuffing their hands into a puppet. These injuries can range from minor chafing and small blisters all the way to the loss of a limb and death. Luckily, there is a solution. Felt Up Hand Puppet Lube was specifically designed by scientists to provide the lubrication that feels good, but also keeps puppeteers safe. I feel good. Uh, my puppet feels good. And because of Felt Up, well, we're both healthy. If you or someone you love uses hand puppets, don't they deserve to get Felt Up? If I didn't get my son Felt Up when he was younger, he might not be here today. Felt Up Hand Puppet Lube for your loved ones. I'm so embarrassed, Barbara. I just don't know why this is happening to me. Maybe it's time we considered getting a little help. What about a prescription drug? Or maybe I should just put my dick in a splint. Trouble chubbing up? Scared of pills? Now there's help from Professor Willie's Dingle Splints. The only $5.99 over-the-counter solution for erectile dysfunction. Thank you so much, honey. Don't thank me. Thank Professor Willie. Professor Willie's Dingle Splints. Getting wood the old-fashioned way. Thanks again for having me over, Scott. Oh, you're welcome, Marjorie. <laughs> um, so... Is your date night conversation a bore? Yes, yes it is. Please help. We have nothing to talk about. Then try Nigel the Chimney Sweep. He's a real adorable British street urchin who makes an excellent conversation piece. Oh, well, isn't he fabulous? All ragged and covered in soot. Oh, please, miss, help me. I have a family. They don't know where I am. Please help. <laughs> oh, I haven't the slightest what he's saying, but look at that adorable hat. And you, Scott. Well, you seem so, so nurturing. Thanks, Marjorie. Please, please, I miss me mom. Why am I dressed like this? Get your very own Nigel the Chimney Sweep today so he can start sweeping your loved ones into your heart. Help me! Or heart. Help me! This week on Racist Doctor. Doctor, we're losing him. We've tried everything. Isn't it obvious? This has lupus. But will this be racist doctor's last patient? We're gonna have to fire him. Why? He's a terrible racist. But he's an amazing doctor. Don't miss the season finale of Racist Doctor. Give it to me straight, Doc. Am I gonna live? I promise you I'll do everything in my power to save you so you can keep living your miserable life. Uh, thanks? And nothing can prepare you for the shocking final moments. You suffered a pretty severe blow to the head after that last surgery. I think I... May be losing my ability to be. <laughs> <laughs>